Hi, I'm Ron Polk, owner of Polk Homes, and this is episode five in the making of my mobile wood shop. And today we'll take a look at the progress I've made so far. So I've progressed with uh, building out the uh, miter saw station side of the truck. First I decided to uh, attempt to mount the planer so that I could use it in place without having to lift it up and uh, set it up. So it's kind of heavy and have, being able to uh, just use it uh, for quick playing here and there as well as some production work. So I was able to uh, uh, mount it up high out of the way but low enough that uh, it's easy to make adjustments on it. Uh, I am limited on the thickness of the plane to about three, three and a half inches, uh, which is more than adequate for most of the planing I do. And again, it can be taken down and set on the uh, on my uh, workbench for production planing. In feed, of course, is unlimited because it goes outside the truck, and then the out feed uh, is far longer than I'll need. I've also added a vacuum system with a two-inch plumbing pipe, and then I integrated the uh, standard two and a half inch blast gate. So I've got a, a vacuum system with the uh, blast gate here to uh, collect dust when I'm planing. The miter stand or the miter station uh, was a little tricky. I was limited to 20 inches on this side so that uh, I wouldn't take up more of my walkway and uh, material hauling capabilities. So what I had to do was uh, even with the small architecture uh, of the um, capex saw it still would hit the wall uh, pushed all the way back so what I did was uh, put some dados in the uh, two side cabinets and used a three-quarter inch uh, slide it pulls out the distance I need it to and I've got a couple of stops which are just uh, um, little pieces of uh, three-quarter inch ply that bump into each other back there and then when the saw is pulled out this distance, I get full swing both directions as well as I can lay the saw over for combination work. Again, also uh, dust collection with the uh, blast gate here. I can just open this up and collect dust when I'm uh, using the, the miter saw. The uh, planer collects dust quite well as it has a power fan that blows it out. The, the miter saw, this is the best dust collection system I've seen on any miter saw so far, and yet it still probably only collects about probably somewhere around 60 or 70 percent of the dust. So there's still quite a bit of dust, but it'll help. And then the uh, vacuum is mounted here. And there is uh, the attachment for it is there. I still have to pick up some additional uh, shop vac hose to, to build a custom short hose um, for that. And then while I'm talking about the vacuum, I also have on the table saw put uh, dust collection again with the blast gate. And again, I have to build a short hose for that uh, with some of the shop vac uh, two and a half inch stuff. Fourth connection point for the vacuum I've put in this cabinet here. And this one, will I'll have an outlet. Uh, I haven't wired the trailer yet. Uh, that'll be coming up pretty soon. But I'll have an outlet in here uh, for plugging in my tools. And I'll also have a switch, a power switch, uh, for the vacuum. Instead of doing an automatic system, I'm going to do a four-way switch. One here, one at the miter saw that I can use for both the miter saw and the, and the um, planer. And then I'll have one also at the table saw. But the reason for this one here is uh, one for vacuuming up the truck. I'll be able to plug in uh, the hand tools when I'm working here, when I'm routing or when I'm cutting with the track saw and those kinds of things. I'll be able to plug the power in and the vacuum. And I plan on keeping this, uh, I'll put a, this bottom shelf will have some, some sides on it to be a pull out. And this will be uh, no permanent tool storage. This will just be for me to lay the tools that I'm working with so that I can keep the uh, bench top clear. And this uh, box up top on this side, the various size tracks that I have for the um, Festool track saw system so that I can just pull them right down and use them. And I'll also keep uh, some accessories up there like the parallel guides and also my sacrificial strips to lay on the bench top. And since I had to fabricate that to store the tracks, um, I went ahead and made it deep enough that I could put about 13 or so of these uh, bins uh, which will fit right up top and there's a little lip there 
so I can easily pull these down. The air compressor has found a home. I'll be doing some hard pipe with some galvanized pipe toward the back of the shop where I'll have my hose reel uh, so that I won't have to pull out compressor when I'm using it in the mobile shop or when I'm needing air on the job. My two four foot tripod ladders are there, seven foot tripod ladder on the top, and then my two adjustable ladders that I use for scaffolding and also for taller work. And then in the very back corner, I was able to uh, nest in all of the uh, sawhorses, both for the minor stand and my standard sawhorses. And then the box in the middle was sized primarily to uh, hold the ladders up high enough that the compressor would fit underneath. And that storage is gonna be used for my air hoses and my electrical cords and also my vacuum hoses. And then in this corner here, I'll be putting all of my brooms and vacuum wands. I've created the adjustable bins, the deeper ones here for some of my larger tools, and then below some shallower ones. Again, these are all adjustable. And then I've, I've uh, created a three quarter inch strip that screws on and once the tools are placed and, all, and everything's adjusted the way I want it, these will screw down. Uh, they become a lip to keep the tools from sliding out underway and also keeps the uh, the dividers in place. On this side I'll be putting some of my more commonly used tools, my battery drills and screw guns, my battery chargers, I'll have outlets in there. The next step will be to build out the drawers and start loading in tools. So everything is kind of roughed out now. All the big tools have a home. I know everything fits and everything will work. And so now I'll begin uh, uh, deciding on where the drawers will go, how deep they'll be. I have plenty of bases built that can either be pull out shelves or drawers. And so that'll be the next step in the progress. So that's the update on the making of my mobile wood shop. Thank you for taking the time to watch.